this dynamic reminds me a lot of what happened to the student protesters in Hong Kong. And they were saying the same thing, that they had nothing to lose uh, for different reasons, because they knew that, they, that the, the Chinese government was going to destroy them if they didn't win that fight. And But this one seems different in a sense because because the Cuban government is is just broke. Like they don't they don't have any resources. They don't have that money flowing in from Venezuela. The USSR is long gone. So it strikes me that that there's more hope in this situation because it's been 62 years and there's only so much of other people's money that you can steal at some point. They do have an income source, though, and that income source is going strong, and that is the uh, trade with the drug trade, the drug trafficking. Uh, Cuba is the place where all drugs flow through to into the United States, pretty much. So um, they still have, you know, as long as we continue this war on drugs here in the United States against it, they will have and they will continue to have a large amount of money and uh, arms. That's I, I hadn't thought of that. I know about the devastation of the drug war in in Honduras and across Latin America, but uh, Cuba is that that trading hub. Cuba apparently is that trading hub. It's um, you know it, it's a thing that everybody talks about, but it's kind of hush hush. It's been going on since uh, Fidel's um, bodyguard years ago was one of the first people to bring this up. You know, he himself had met with uh, the drug traffickers in Colombia. This is. This was a path that we should know about, and um, it's kind of kept hush hush. And I don't understand why that is. I, I mean, the United States could very easily fix the situation, not only in Cuba but Venezuela and most of Latin America. Um, not to mention here in the United States, just by ending this one terrible policy. But here we are. So uh, someone, someone, phone Marco Rubio and tell him that for some reason I don't think he's good on the issue of about the war on drugs, but. Uh, uh, Republicans could help the Cuban people simply by ending the war on drugs. The Biden administration officially is in favor of, of at least ending some of that war, although Biden and, and Kamala Harris are both drug warriors. Um, yeah, that's that's an interesting angle that I hadn't thought of, but but that would that would do tremendous help to the Cuban people right now. It would. And again, not just Cubans, uh, Venezuela. Venezuela, one of the the ways they make money is again the the drug trade. So um, Nicaragua, I mean, it's just it's everywhere in Latin America that has been devastated by this policy would help, but then it would not fuel these regimes. You know, this is we give them the power to continue. Um, besides that, you know, the United States continues to fund these regimes um, with with Venezuela specifically. Uh, just this past week, I saw articles coming out from U.S. Aid saying that they have no idea where the money we've sent to Venezuela has actually gone. Um, less than 2% of the money the United States sends to Venezuela actually reaches the Venezuelan people. The money we send as foreign aid to help them. And it's actually going to you know, either the Maduro regime or the Guaido regime. They're both pretty much the same thing. And so, I mean, we just have horrible policies in this country, to be honest. I don't know what we're doing, but we're not helping. We are really causing problems.